Greetings, this is m squared, and we are going to find the discriminant of some quadratic equations and then use that to help us find out what kind of roots and how many roots a quadratic equation has. So just real quick, keep in mind that there are four different things that can happen that tell you what kind of roots that you'll have. If the discriminant is greater than zero and it's a perfect square, you're going to have two real roots and they're going to be rational. It means they can be written as a fraction. You won't have like square roots of 17 kind of thing going on. If it's positive and it's not a perfect square, then you, that's when you'll get like the square root of threes and square root of seventeens and stuff like that. They'll be real, but they'll be irrational and there will still be two. So when this discriminant is positive, you have two real roots, but sometimes they're rational and sometimes they're irrational. If it's equal to zero, the discriminant is equal to zero, you only have one real root. And if it's less than zero, you have two complex roots. So for example, if the you this when it has two complex roots, it doesn't actually cross the x-axis. -ax, x That's why they're complex numbers, those negative square roots. So it'll be something like this. When it's exactly one, remember it touches the x-axis and bounces off and goes right back down. And then here, on both of these, you're going to have two, but two roots. But on this one, it'll actually like go through at a integer or a rational numbers place, you know, like could be halves or fourths or something, but it won't be the square root of, you know, three plus or minus the square root of seven. So keep that in mind as we go through this next section. I, I will refer to this, but I won't show it to you again. So if you need to write that down, you can pause and do that. Okay, so in order to find the discriminant, we first need to make sure things are in the correct form. We need everything on one side. So if it's not, if there's some on the left side, some terms on the right side, we want to move everything over so that we get a zero on one of the sides. And now I know that a is 2, b is negative 5, and c is negative 3. And once I have my correct a, b's, and c's, it's not that hard. I just square the b, which is 25, minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times 2 is 8, times 3 is, what did I do, 8, 8 times 3 is 24. A negative times a negative is a positive. So I get negative, I mean I get 25 plus, what did I say, 24? which is 49. Now 49 is greater than zero, so I know I have two roots. That's what greater than zero is. And because it's a perfect square, I have two real rational roots. And I don't know if your teacher makes you say real and rational. If it's rational, you know it's real. So you might be able to just say two rational roots. Remember, we're not finding the roots here. We're not solving. We're just finding what kind and how many. So this one, I'm going to have to move that 21 to the left. And then I'm ready for my A, B, and C. So my A is 6, my B is 6, and my C is negative 21. So B squared minus 4 times A times C. So the two negatives, I just like to cancel them right away if I have two. So I'm going to say 36 times, oh, minus, or plus now, I guess, 4 times 6 times 21, and we get 540. It's greater than 0. If it's greater than 0, if the discriminant is greater than 0, I have two roots. It's not a perfect square. 540 is not a perfect square. If you weren't sure, you could find the square root of 540 in your calculator, and it's 23 point, you know, da 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 So you know that it's not a perfect square, so that means we have two irrational roots. Now on to this one. We have 5x squared. We're moving things over to the left. And a is 5, b is negative 5, and c is 4. So negative 5 squared, be careful with that negative. It's a negative 5 times a negative 5, which does equal positive 25, minus 4 times a times c. And that's 25 minus 4 times 5 is 20. And what is that, 16, what is that, 80? I, I believe it's 80, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> so what is 25 minus 80? It is negative 55. Well, that is less than 0. And when you get discriminants that are less than 0, you have two complex roots. That means you don't have a solution either. It doesn't cross the x-axis. 
So last one. I'm going to move the X over and notice that I had to kind of move it in between these two to make sure I don't think that this is B. Remember B is in front of the X, it's the coefficient of the X term, it's not the constant term. So A equals 1, B equals negative 18, and C equals 81. And so B squared minus 4 times A times C and 18 squared is 324 and 4 times 81 is also 324 so we get 324 minus 324 which is 0 so when my discriminant equals 0 I have one root and I know it's a rational root one rational root okay hopefully that will be helpful to you if you're when you're solving quadratic equations if you find the discriminant first sometimes that sometimes that's helpful because it tells you what kind of roots you're gonna expect and it might tell you whether it's factorable or not because if you get one of these guys then it usually is factorable these guys are never factorable so it is helpful in some ways like that and if you're using the quadratic formula and you find it first you haven't lost any time because that is the number that goes under the square root sign Good luck with that. M squared, signing out.